at you, a fresh face, literally don't even have my edges done. Y'all see what's going on with this 4B, 4C hair. I don't even know if that's true. Like, do people still try to like label their hair? Anyway, it's raining outside and I think they're doing construction. So if for any reason you guys hear like background noise, that's exactly what it is. But let's get into the video. So today what I'm gonna be doing is actually a little bit different, actually a lot of it different than something I've ever done. Just gonna be like a get ready with me talk through uh, with my braids actually and kind of giving you an update about the passion twist. So I have them up in like a bun, nothing too crazy, literally just like with a hair tie and they're up. Right, so I can do my makeup. But I'm gonna do my edges first. So this is the Evan Edge Control. You can find this anywhere, pretty much at your local beauty supply store. Actually, I'm saying anywhere, but I've never seen it in like Walmart or anything, or even CVS. So disregard. <laughs> but I do know that uh, it's definitely for sale um, in most beauty supply stores and then also like on Amazon or eBay. Um, so if you want the link to that, let me know so I can remember to put it in my description box if it's not there by the time this video is uploaded. So, just putting a little bit of this like all over my edges. And it's really interesting because of course, when I've seen this, um, this style, y'all, this looks stupid. I'm just getting the product on here. But anyway, when I've seen this style thus far, everybody I've seen has had this really nice texture, you know, and it's just, it's been a smooth process. So it's kind of made me think like, oh, this was gonna be great for me. That has not been the case, y'all. I'm so tired of doing my edges. <laughs> like, tired. Don't get me wrong. The style is cute. You know, it's definitely something to do if you are wanting, like, less tension on your hair. I definitely would recommend doing it. But outside of that, I mean, to do them so large, if you do have, like, a texture similar to mine, you may want to rethink it, especially if you um, didn't do it yourself. Like, if you're paying someone to do this, you might be a little bit frustrated with the longevity of the style because it actually did not last that long. So I've only had these in for probably about a week and it's not that it didn't last, it's just I feel like it needs to be touched up. And if you guys know me, I do like my hair to be extremely perfect. So I change my hair often because once I feel like it's like out of that stage of just looking, I don't even know how I'm trying to style these, my edges, but once it's out of that stage and just looking completely fresh, I'm usually like over it. So um, that's kind of how I've been with these braids also. Um, and so they actually have been really easy if I'm honest. I'm kind of like 50-50 on it. Part of me is like, wow, this is a really easy style. It literally only took two hours to do. You know, definitely protective. But longevity wise, I would definitely say you probably want to rethink it. I'm just going to go ahead and take some of my Gotta Be Glue. Um, gel just to kind of like set this into place but you see what I mean my edges have just curled up so much and if you've been following me for a while y'all know I used to texturize my edges and I decided that I was going to stop doing that because I didn't notice like breakage toward this portion of my hair like across the front so I was like let me stop doing that just to see if my edges will actually lay down y'all I feel your pain I feel your pain Oh my god, I never thought that I would say that, but I've been texturizing them for so long. Excuse me, burping. But um, but yeah, I mean, so far so good. The passion twists are fine. It's definitely a protective style that you can get away with a solid week or maybe two. I think in my last video, or in the video about the actual passion twist, I had someone say, um, girl, I've had them for like two weeks, you know, my hair is frizzy already. Your hair might get frizzy, especially when you get in the shower. If you're not tying this up, maybe in the best possible way that's going to happen. Um, also, the frizziness is probably just going to come because this is a more natural style. And it's twist. So it's meant to be more rustic. And that's what I'm getting at. So not to say that my edges are like the devil. Not saying that at all. But if you do have a softer texture and you're cool with just the way that that grown out look um, is, then this will be the style for you. For me, it was just a bit, it was like, ugh. I don't know, I just, I either want my edges to be put away or to be swoops as minimum as possible. Like right now, I'm doing swoops from hell. Like what the hell? I should not have to do all this. And maybe I don't have to do, the, do all this. Maybe I'm just doing this. Is it just me or do you do your baby hair different every single time? But anyway, um, the hair that I use, um, I definitely put that link 
in my description box in the original video i'll put it in this one as well it is from toya trust i got that off amazon um and I, the reason i did that is because with this style just becoming more and more popular it's been harder to actually get um, access to the Freetress hair and so I didn't want to post a tutorial where it's like a situation where you can't find something else so just know that you are definitely able to pretty much look up any bohemian or water wave um, crochet hair to achieve the style so that actually will allow a lot more flexibility and it might be a little bit cheaper too so I definitely want you to keep that in mind I know that when I post tutorials or other youtubers post tutorials you guys assume oh I have to use that exact you know hair to get the look but that's not always the case you know the my at least my point and um posting these videos and things like that is to teach you how to do your hair or basically how to get the look for less you know not to have to go pay a stylist to help you out just kind of beginner friendly tutorials that make it really easy because honestly I wanted to do these twisted at the root now I did have a situation in the back because the nape of my neck is a little bit shorter than the top of my hair or just like that perimeter area if you're like me 4b 4c hair or just a rougher texture and you don't want to label it a lot of times you get that breakage in the back of your nape that happens to me so I did notice that the ones in the back seem to kind of slip a little bit literally across my bottom row and I'm like huh but again I only have three boxes so imagine if these were smaller this definitely will work out a lot better so I will be doing another tutorial with them much smaller so foundation I'm using NARS radiant um, foundation but oh, oh okay all right <laughs> But anyway, I wanted you guys to know that although I told you that the length of the hair, um, the way that it comes in the pack is an 18, it is, but just keep in mind that the way that you pretty much stretch the hair, or not even stretch it, because it's crochet hair, let's say that I have one strand of hair, right? So I make that one long, and then for the second strand, I make that one probably a little bit shorter or longer i need the hair to actually show you what i mean i don't have any around me but you can actually lengthen it out like it does not have to be you take two strands and you put them side by side together um or anything like that like you literally can kind of just maneuver it a little bit so i want you guys to keep that in mind i don't want you to feel stuck or like oh i want them to be down to my butt um but i don't have a way or i haven't seen that hair in that length so yeah you can kind of play with it to stretch it just the same as you would um, regular braiding hair so you just have to kind of know how to play with the hair a little bit but like I said I'll be doing another tutorial on it so that's something that you definitely want to see and want me to include to be probably even more detailed definitely let me know leave it down in my uh, comment section like any special request for the upcoming video um, with those you know you see what I'm saying how much just curling up again I feel y'all I swear I never felt y'all before but this is crazy all right so a foundation on i'm taking my anastasia dip brow in the color a dark brown or chocolate is usually what i'm using and i've hardly been filling in my brows if i'm honest so i'm just gonna like flick the hairs up and just take a just a teeny tiny bit of product y'all this is almost drying out that's how not frequent i have been doing my eyebrows since I've got the microbladed, I could not imagine my life without them, if I'm honest. Like, this is crazy. And literally, that's all that I have to do. Just like the bare minimum. I'm not even using an eyebrow brush for this. This is like a flat eyeshadow brush. Maybe even like a concealer brush is what I'm using. I'm actually going to fill them in today, like more than I normally would. Just because I haven't done it in a while. So, I kind of want to see what that looks like it's kind of weird it's kind of like I forgot how to do it okay, so for brows um, and to kind of like just highlight my face all over I'm taking my Smashbox um, concealer this is in the color what color is this light medium studio skin 24 hour concealer so so I would probably say in general the hair actually lasts I would say probably in the way that I've taught it to you guys it can probably last a solid two weeks that's what I'm gonna say with the messiness and just kind of like eh, all right I mean it's rough but I can kind of manage it I'm gonna say a solid two weeks now if you make them a bit smaller of course I'm gonna say a solid month and that's kind of standard with all like you know braiding protective styles you can usually get away with maybe a month and a half maximum two months depending on how tight 
um, the install was and also how fast your hair grows. So that's another thing. Also, I have to take into account um, my hair does grow kind of fast in my opinion. I think my biggest deal is kind of uh, retaining length right now. That's been the biggest thing, really, truly retaining my length. Um, but outside of that, I mean, the style's been really easy. Um, to cut down on the frizz, I have not done anything to it, so I really don't have an answer to that. Um, my best answer is literally just allow the style to do what it needs to do. If you feel like you need to touch up any of the braids, you can definitely take a little bit of um, maybe... Maybe a little gel or a little edge control and maybe just like untwist them and retwist them. This is if you're doing this yourself. If you're going to someone else to get them done, honestly, it's going to be one of those things where it's just like, damn, my hair is getting frizzy. And this is a part of the style. So that's why I'm telling you, I don't have a perfect answer for it, y'all. I don't know why the hell I'm using this flimsy ass cheap thing, but this is what I have right in front of me. So this is what I'm going with. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so I don't really have an answer to that. I can definitely say to moisturize my hair beforehand, um, I did use coconut oil. So my hair tends to hold on to that oil for a while. So that's not something that I'm really like concerned about as far as moisture. Um, I have been actually going through probably every, I'm going to say like two days with my Cream of Nature um, spray. Just as like a light, you know, sheen. Just to kind of like liven up the braids a little bit, but nothing crazy. And for the most part, I have not worn them down. I've pretty much worn them like up. So they've just been up and out the way. I have not done really much to it, which is the whole point in a protective style. You don't want to have to do too much, right, at all. So I'm trying to think about a lot of the questions that you guys probably would have had. The passion twist, I remember telling you guys in the initial video, I'm actually just setting my face with, um, what is this? Kat Von D Transition Setting Powder. But I did uh, kind of go over, um, you know, with you guys that I did not care for the rubber band method. I can definitely see why now it may be helpful, especially if you're going to be doing them a little bit larger, though. Um, simply for the crochet. So when you think about how long you would have the style in to kind of prevent it from slipping out and things like that i can definitely see why the crochet method would definitely be helpful so i'm not going to knock it i have kind of changed my mind just a little bit on it but the rubber bands is what still just kind of has me nervous if i'm honest it's just strictly the rubber bands that's what makes me the most uncomfortable um and so that's just kind of where I am with it. You guys can kind of make that judgment for yourself, but if you're okay and you feel confident that the rubber bands will definitely help that style last a little bit longer, because of course the rubber bands are, um, you know, they're going to be holding your hair tight, whereas my hair kind of has flexibility to kind of just do what it wants to do. If I had a, y'all, I'm really just doing a lot right now. So I'm putting, <laughs> I'm putting the setting powder all over my face and then I noticed my eyelids were like oily, so this is what's happening. I'm like muting them out so disregard sorry y'all probably like what the heck is she doing um but yeah so that's pretty much something that i did notice so i'm kind of on the fence about it i think i did tell you that i was gonna do this with the rubber band method just to see how i felt about it so i guess you'll end up with about three different or three different passion twist videos for me the first video of course would have been the initial video of just me trying it for the first time doing them like this without any um no crochet no crochet no rubber bands anything just literally putting them in and going and then the next tutorial obviously is going to be with the rubber bands probably a teensy tiny bit smaller and then that final tutorial on them will be them just a much smaller of course no rubber bands but just a smaller version um not that you guys you know can't do that yourselves but i know that some of you really like to see you know videos like that where you just kind of get to see the process so i get that i get that so please tell me why i felt the need to section off my face when i was just gonna blend everything in the same y'all i do that like every day that i do my makeup and i'm like why do i do that when i'm just gonna go like this anyway so i might as well just set it someone's blowing me up so since this is a basic face i'm literally just gonna bronze up my cheeks just a teeny tiny bit with the black radiance of i guess this is like a contour palette they have like a highlighter and then a contour and a bronzing and i'm just using that to literally like bronze up my face this is literally like a quick what i've been what i've been doing lately type of thing which you can pretty much catch in all my videos because my makeup looks never really change. If I'm honest, you guys probably would have noticed that already. 
<laughs> and once I like a product, I usually stick to it. I try not to, you know, switch up the tempo too, too much. And I've just really been enjoying more natural faces. I've been seeing these, this Instagram, um, just, I don't know, I've, it's kind of, I guess, depending on who you follow, you'll see the changes, but I'm noticing that people are kind of backing away from such heavy makeup. I don't know if it's just because it's about to be hot outside or what, but I'm definitely happy about that because I'm so tired of seeing these cake faces as I cake on my makeup. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the same bronze shade in my crease area just to kind of give me a little bit of color in here. So what I've been using to tie my hair up at nighttime, um, I do have like a bunch of these like turban style, really honestly it's just a piece of fabric that's like stretchy or whatever, but I got them at the beauty supply store, they were like a dollar, I have them in literally every color. I have like black, lime green, pink, blue, I even have like this African like print um, texture looking one, um, but yeah I have them like almost in every freaking that you could imagine. So I have this cute palette that I got from BoxyCharm. It's called the Violet Voss Pro Eyeshadow Palette. It's really nice. It literally has all the label like eyeshadows um, and it's just a wide variety like pink and then of course some of these neutral shades here. I'm going to be taking the color hashtag <laughs> just to go back into the crease area. It's just more of an orange shade. Kind of give me a little warmth. To cut this a little bit, I'm actually taking my LA Pro Concealer. I'm going to be taking my LA Pro Concealer just to go ahead and cut the lid. Just to carve it out. Alright, so from the palette, I'm going to be taking the color Bestie. Which is just kind of like this really neutral shade. And I'm just going to tap that in all the areas that I applied that concealer. All right, and then I'm taking brownie points mixed with a little hashtag on the sides just to kind of bring the look together. All right, so I'm going to pop on lashes and I'll be back. All right, babe, so I have my lashes on. I really was just kind of like going through some of the questions that I've been receiving already. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, you guys are saying that the hair is like slipping and stuff like that. I did experience that as well. You didn't get to see that in the video because, of course, I edited it out. Um, while I'm talking, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a, a little bit of the color toffee, which is like this like gold shimmery shade up under the bottom lid. But, um, yeah, I did experience that as well, and it can be tricky. That's why I'm assuming people have either, like I said, decided to do the rubber band method and then crochet it in. And then just start to twist um, if they want that kind of twisted at the root look or um, they will go ahead and do the braid like I did and then just kind of go from there. So it can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're going to be doing these larger. That's the biggest thing. The larger that you do it a little, you know, it does make it a little bit more difficult, um, I would say. I can definitely say the hair that I used um, was not a bad texture. It did feel like it was like closer to like human hair. And so, no, it doesn't make my hair, like, itch at all. The hair is actually really soft. And y'all saw I did not, like, dip it into anything. I did not dip these braids, as usual, with, like, hot water to try to seal them. I literally just allowed the hair to kind of just do its own thing. I ended up not, I think I said, like, in the video of me, like, doing the braids, I was like, yeah, at the end, I'm going to, like, put mousse all over them and kind of let the curls do what they're going to do. The reason you didn't see that by the end of the video is because I ended up not doing it. So it was just no need. Like the style, once I was done, it was perfect. Like it was just perfect. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's right now it's a love relationship for the passion twist. I'm gonna be doing it again. I don't want you guys to get discouraged. This is my first time doing it as well. And so I even experienced that kind of like, oh, what's going on? Like this is kind of weird. So I feel like I mastered the style nevertheless, right? But at the same time, I experienced the same things that you experienced. I want you guys to know that this is definitely like a learning experience. Everything that I post is not always like, oh, Chrissy knows it all. Like, no. I saw the video and I copied the style. You see what I mean? So it's just a learning process. That's why I like the videos that I do because it does give you guys a chance to see how it's done, you know, what that technique is like, in what way you can kind of make it a little bit easier to do for yourself. And like I said, don't get caught up on the hair too, too much for like what to use and what not to use. It did this hair, the Toco Chest hair did not make 
Um, Togo Trends, that's a thing. See, I think I just figured it out. So y'all know how I do all these hair reviews, right? One day I'll do a video about this, um, but a lot of companies tend to use, let's say there's like, I don't know, there's three different companies, right? And then below that, they have these little baby companies, but they're technically still up under the same umbrella. So these warehouses are manufacturing all this hair. Let's say you have these main three distributors, and from there, it just trickles on down. And usually this hair is manufactured overseas, whether that's Asia, um, I don't know where else they would manufacture it, but for the most part, we know that that happens in Asia, right? So if that is the case, and this company is called Toko Tress, right? And it, if I'm saying that right, I hope so. But, and it looks exactly like the Freetress hair. It feels just like the Freetress hair. That's why I'm saying I don't want y'all to get caught up in the hair because there's so many hair scams, look like repeat companies that you would be surprised. I'll do a video, a tell all video one day about a company that sent me hair. Literally, I was, you know, I was doing a collaboration. Let me still talk. I mean, let me still do my makeup, but. I was doing a collaboration with a, a company and I guess it was, I was actually working with two or three companies at the time and they sent me a box of what they were supposed to send me but a different company's name and they contacted me immediately and was like oh I'm sorry you're gonna get a package in the mail it's gonna be it's gonna look like one thing it's gonna be something else and it was something else so like I said the videos that I put up please know I am talking to these companies and letting them know the real before I deliver it to you that's why you never see me um, ever post really negative uh, hair reviews or anything like that and this is also why you've seen me mostly do tutorials and then reviews right I don't really like to talk about the hair a month two months later because I never really know you know because I don't wear the hair every single day and I don't want to put that out there like that's what I've done um so the lip gloss that I'm using is Kat Von D this is in the color bow and arrow it's just like a matte uh lip paint or whatever but yeah, I mean, the most that I'll wear hair possibly is about two weeks. So if you do get a review video from me, that's my experience within the two-week span. Never usually longer than that. And if I do bring back to life some hair that maybe I've worn, just know that it probably was sitting up for a little second and I'm wearing it and I'm just giving you an update on it. That's why I prefer to do tutorials than reviews because I want to show you how to do your hair, show you how to work with the hair, show you the styles, how to install it. That's what this channel is about, not necessarily reviews. So I want to make that clear. All right, so now that I have that popped on, usually I'm like, oh, I want to do a matte lip. I never end up doing it. I'm going to take this little cheap gloss. This is from Coconut, oh, Vitalip Coconut Oil. I got this from a beauty spot store, y'all. So cheap. It was a dollar. Clear gloss, put it straight on, literally lasts through Hurricane Katrina. Like, why did I even say that? I'm so ignorant. Anyway, I apologize. But yeah, so this is a very durable <laughs> lip gloss. It was literally a dollar. I like it. You'll love it. And... Um, just to highlight, I'm actually going to take my Wild and Radiant BH Cosmetics uh, palette, y'all. This is not even available anymore. So sad. And I had done like this um, like little Christmas thing at my house. I usually have like some type of Christmas party every year and where I buy like a bunch of gifts, put it on the tree, we play games. And my friends, just kind of you get what you get, right? So I had done that and I gave this away to a friend that doesn't even wear makeup. Ugh. And just to find out, she doesn't even use it. So I'm like, girl, can I get it back? Like, what the heck? But I haven't asked for it back. So if you're watching this video, you know I'm talking to you, <laughs> sis. All right? Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this highlight. So y'all know this is my favorite palette. If you guys have seen all of my makeup tutorials, I don't even know that I would consider myself like a makeup guru on YouTube. But I definitely want to get into it a little bit more. Because y'all always tell me y'all like my makeup in just my standard tutorials. So I figure I must be kind of good, huh? This is pretty. Straight to the point. And I have this popped up under the eye. I'm actually going to put a little blush on. I'm going to take my Sigma blush. This is in the color Corte Rosa. And it's just kind of like this mauve pink color. I'm not going to be putting the products in the description below because this is not what this uh, video is about at all. So it's just neither here nor there. So you're just getting a treat. But <laughs> I'm being so nonchalant today. Sorry, this is Aquarius vibes. I'm going through something today. So just to finish off the face, I'm going to be taking my Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. And 
And now that that is there, on the back of my hand, I have hair glue. Comment below if you guys put on your lashes with hair glue. I know I am not the only one. I better not be the only one. So, actually, I'm going to go back in to kind of reiterate and set my face a little bit more with the Fenty Beauty. I wasn't going for anything, like, super matte, so I didn't mention this before. But I do want to take just a little bit of that powder just to kind of set, like, the center of my face. And it does make a huge difference, even though I thought I set my face previously, but I guess not. I guess not good enough, right? Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I definitely forgot to come back to kind of close out here, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely leave any additional questions or comments that you have down below, and I will definitely be sure to try to get back to you on that. I feel like I kind of covered everything through the video. I know that it was kind of lengthy. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Turn on those post notifications and definitely look forward to those future passive twist videos, any other protective styles. I will see you guys next time. Love you so much. Bye, babes. Oh,